Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for your time. Uh, today, we, we have the privilege of Matthias uh, sharing a bit with us uh, about his project with regards to the Hong Kong riot in 2019. Uh, again, this is uh, to, to, to ensure uh, smoothness of, of internet connection. Uh, we will all be muted. But at any, at any point in time, if you have any questions, uh, please unmute yourself and then uh, ask and Matthias would address it either either on the spot or maybe a bit later as he goes on. So thank you again. Uh, thank you, Matthias, for, for your time and, and hope everybody enjoys. Matthias, thank you. Please. Yes. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, yeah, good afternoon in Asia. Good morning in Europe wherever you are and um, thank you for um, joining us. So today I'm going to talk about um, the Hong Kong protest. I was there on um, June, September and November. So I'm just going to run through my, uh, my photos and I'm going to share my experience, how I uh, get my, my pictures, how I get my photos and uh, what equipment I use, and if, if you have any questions along the way, uh, feel free to uh, unmute and, and stop me and ask. Uh, okay, so um, let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Matthias Heng. I'm a photojournalist. I am um, mm -hmm. also a Leica instructor. Um, so I've been using the uh, M camera for 30 years. Uh, and I've been shooting for 35 years. So how this Hong Kong riot came about, um, it all started with, um, with the uh, expedition of one of the uh, criminals. Um, you know, I'm not sure whether you know about the, the, the case, how the Hong Kong riot started. Uh, this guy, he went to Taiwan with his girlfriend and he murdered his girlfriend, came back, uh, he was caught uh, for, for murder in um, Hong Kong because the, the sentence was, uh, the crime was uh, done in Taiwan. Uh, Hong Kong could not, press, uh, could, not, could not press charges on him. So they wanted to extradite him to China. And that's when the whole uh, of the um, Hong Kong people went on protest. Uh, they started the... Uh, went against it because this can happen which means Hong Kong will send anyone to China for, for, for sentencing. So that's, that's how this protest started. So it was supposed to be a peaceful demonstration and as time goes by and things became uh, out of hands and then it, you know there was a lot of uh, chaos and riot. Right, I wanted to start about this photo. Um, my photos, they are not in sequence. So the, the, the mix of everything. So I'm just gonna run through uh, more of my experience. So this photo, um, I was in Monco. This was taken in November. That was one of the most hottest period of the time. Uh, every day there was a uh, protest and a lot of uh, uh, tear gas and, and riot going on. So how I got this photo, I, um, uh, this was shot, it's about 11 p.m. The protest went on to, till about four, four in the morning. Um, so as press, a lot of us um, were asked to, to back off, to leave as well, you know, not to go, go close to the, uh, by police. So because um, I will be short lens, so I need to go close. So due to that, um, with this camera, it's very discreet. So I was able to go close and uh, take my shots. And once the police noticed that I was taking, that's when they, they chased me out. Uh, so, so, so that's how I, I get my photos. Uh, next photo, please. Can we move on? Yep. 
Uh, this photo was taken during um, the lunch crowd uh, protest demonstration. So every day, almost every day, the lunch uh, office workers come out to protest. So this sign of gesture uh, it's got a meaning to it. So why I took this photo? Um, because of the the hands up. So it means the uh, the um, the five key of uh, five key demands. You know. So so the the protest protesters they they wanted the withdrawal of the bill of the extradition and investigation of the police brutality and misconduct. Uh, release of all arrested protesters um, and then the uh, retraction of the official of the protest uh, riots and they asked for the resignation of uh, Sherry Lam and asking for a new uh, election. So this was a peaceful demonstration. So in order to get such photos, um, it's not that easy because you know it's such a big crowd and everything is, is is quite messy. When I say messy, right? To get a nice photo, you need to compose in such a way that everything fits in. So uh, I played with angles in order to get um, this picture. So and of course the the, the building um, blends in as well with the mm -hmm. with the crowd. So if there was a clear sky, then my picture might not be that strong. So the building says a lot for me and with the people. Next, please. Uh, a question, Matthias. So when yes. you're shooting all this, do you require a press kind of a pass to go around or you just roam around on your own? Uh, no, I have a press uh, press card, a press accreditation um, in order to, to protect myself so that right. um, police would know that uh, the press from the media, because at times, if you're not from the media, they, they might give you a bit of a hassle uh, because uh, you're saying that you would have no right to be in there. So yes, that's how I protect myself. But that does not mean that you're fully protected. You still have to safeguard yourself. Okay. Uh, this is also another, this is also the uh, same protest, the lunch crowd protest demonstration. So the lady pulling up the photo that was shot by one of the photographers in the uh, earlier protests of the uh, police. Uh, they, were, they were demanding of uh, uh, police uh, brutality uh, and they, they demand that they should be treated, uh, you know, not with uh, violence. So, so this crowd uh, came out and voiced out saying that we are peaceful demonst dem uh, demonstrators. We are not here on violent, we are having a peaceful demonstration. Next, please. Um, this was this photo was taken in um, PolyU. Uh, PolyU was one of the biggest uh, news headline when the police came in and uh, uh, you know, uh, cracked down the students. So I was, this was shot in Poly, Poly U, I was up in Poly U, taken from the evil view of it. So this place, uh, it was going on for, for weeks, in fact months uh, of blockage. And um, this was the day, the day before the big riot in Poly U. Next please. So in Hong Kong, the main places of uh, demonstration going on. So, um, so you have to be, you have to find the right place uh, or where you want to cover. So there are, there are a few places whereby uh, the demonstration won't be that huge. Certain places are bigger. Uh, this, the police came in. This was in a city. Um, the protesters, they lay bricks along the road to, to, to block the uh, block traffic, uh, to, to, to block the police from coming in, 
So what the police did, they got construction workers coming in. So these are the workers came in, protected by the police, and they cleared the road. So just in case if there was any trouble, and that's when you know, the police will start uh, firing tear gas and arrest uh, protesters who are against uh, the cleanup. Next, please. So the riot is happening in multiple places in one time. So how do you know which is the locations that you should run after? Um, they have a chat group, all different groups of telling you um, whereabouts, what's happening. And you get a lot of people sort of messaging and saying, oh, look, there's, some, there's something going on. And out of nowhere, there's not supposed to be any protest. And, and, then, and then suddenly you see a lot of this uh, uh, riot police uh, bus surrounded the whole area. So people feel very suspicious. You know, something's happening. Okay. So I use a group chat uh, organized by various groups that keeps us informed. So the, the, the group chat is organized by the protesters? Yes, organized by protesters. Um, so they tell you what's happening and update and, uh, and, and it's open to the public. So the public, they can alert uh, uh, what's happening. Right. So, so that's how I, I keep track. I even follow the, follow the news, but the news sometimes is all mainstream, you know, like it could be like conference, having meetings and whatnot. And they tell you, oh, what's happening uh, at the pre present moment. But uh, at times it can be a bit of a delay. So it's better to have percent news by people on the scene. Whereas this photo, um, okay, this is the day before the riot or the crackdown in Poliu on Sunday. So I was there from Saturday right till Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, I slept in uh, Poliu, you know, so in fact I didn't sleep. I was out all day, all night, just, you know, uh, looking for, for stories and, and, and record whatever I could record at the point of time. So this um, was about 8.30 in the morning. I was about to go back actually because nothing was happening. So I decided, you know, maybe, you know, the police not coming in. So just as I was walking back and a group of um, civilians, these uh, civilians, they got really frustrated because there was a lot of uh, dis destruction. So civilians, people who, who were not involved in the protest, they just wanted to move on with a normal life. And uh, they took the, the hands, they took, took the law in their own hands. So all, all this was, they were, was uh, barricade. So the civilians came in, they, uh, they started clearing the barricades. And uh, of course the students, um, they got really angry. As you can see behind the building, that's part of the poly U, and they started shouting and they started throwing rocks and those people. Uh, and they made this, these people managed to clear, clear the road. And just as the students came in, they you know, became a bit violent and the police started coming in. Next photo, please. Yep, so the police came in and um, how riot always starts here, yeah, the police will not come in straight away. In Hong Kong, what they do, they will, they will form a line, uh, like a wall, and we all their, their, their shield, and they will wait for, you could be there for hours before anything could happen. So it's more of like cat and mouse game. So they just wait and wait until the right time and then they, when it starts, it doesn't stop. So this is what happened. They were just in a line. So it can be quite intimidating. Uh, although being mm -hmm. oppressed, being there, uh, the police don't talk to you. They, you know, you don't see the faces. As you can see, they're all uh, covered. Uh, can't even see their eyes. You know, they, they're covered with balaclava. And, 
and uh, we really don't know uh, what will happen because uh, in a riot, um, doesn't matter whether you press or not. Uh, a new a uh, Indonesian journalist uh, was shot by a rubber bullet. She 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 lost she lost an eye, so uh, she was shot at quite close range. So at a, at a point there a point of time, police were also um, firing at journalists. Um, next, please. This was, see, the protests or the demonstration. Um, it comes in various groups. Okay, these are the different. This is a different group. Uh, they gather in the in the park, and they had a, a peaceful demonstration, and they walk around the city. In the photo there behind. Um, it's one of the students who fell from the uh, from the uni, and um, unfortunately he, he didn't make it. You know he he died. So in this in this demonstration, total two two person uh, died, and in in memory of this person, uh, of course you know for them it was a learning thing that they they want peace. And they won the democracy. So how I got this photo? Uh, again, um, I went low, uh, as low to, to the, the banner. So that's how I get my shot to get the dimension. It, it must be quite a quick shoot and run away, right? Because you, you look like you're right in front of them. Yes, I was right in front of them, so you got to be fast. So you know what I did, you know, I just go really quick, go down really low, and take my shot. Okay, so that's how that's how uh, uh, works. And for this, the protesters they don't like, or rather, they they they, they try to avoid being photographed. Uh, although it might sound. Uh, be weird because if you're in a protest, uh, you are in the open because you're, you're you're exposed. People can can photograph you or film you from a from a distance, you know. So whenever they're doing, they're writing something or or they're uh, you know building uh, uh, blocks, road blocks or whatever, you know, because they do block roads. And um, if you take a picture, they will use the umbrella and cover. Or they cover their face. So this was um, in the midst of the demonstration. They were writing. Uh, unfortunately, I can't read Chinese. So um, uh, this is the guy uh, kneeling down or stooping down. He was writing, and all those people around they had umbrellas and covering. And it just happened that I just happened to run across, and um, it caught my eye. You know, so um, what caught my eye is not so much uh, taking the photo of him, but it's also taking the photo of the, the whole environment. So again, when you do storytelling, uh, not, necess not necessarily showing the person's face, but you can show what's happening in the surrounding. Okay. And of, of course, the, uh, the, the students also, they, they need to protect themselves because the authorities, when they've been identi identified, um, they can be arrested. Uh, this is in, uh, during the midst of uh, a protest and the riot was about to happen and the police was safeguarding the whole place. They were sort of surrounded the whole area. So um, it was quite intimidating. If, uh, if you're not used to it, you, you know, they look really, uh, they don't look friendly at all. So you really don't know whether you're doing the right thing in taking a picture. So obviously, you know, if you take a photo like that, you gotta be fast. Uh, don't shoot like crazy. Uh, you gotta be get your photos, move on, take photos again. Next, please. Okay, this is in the in the university. So these are all the uh, as you can see, all the bottles are all petrol bombs. Yeah. 
um, and students they take turns to look after it. So on on my uh, on my right, you see the umbrella there. Uh, it's all protected. You know, they they put uh, shield, uh, they put uh, plastic panels, and you know, in case the police started firing. So it's more of, uh, to 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 safeguard themselves, and then they have a lot of petrol bombs. So this is what happened uh, during in peace time. I call it peace time because there was no no uh, the police was no there was no fighting, but they were just preparing. The students were were preparing. Next, please. If you guys have any question, please feel free to uh, to ask. Um, be it whether it's technical or, or you know how uh, I get my how I get my images. Um, this was in the Polytechnic as well in the uni Poly U, uh, University. This is along the road, uh, road uh, going to different uh, buildings in the building itself in the whole of the uh, university. And these students they were building barricades. They were, they were building barricades and they were, build, uh, they were building walls as well uh, so, to prevent the police from coming in. So, as you can see on the, on the, um, the tarmac on the road, uh, they're all bricks, uh, bottles. Um, okay, the photo is quite small on the screen. But if, I, if this, if I enlarge the picture, I will be able to see. You will be able to see um, what they did. They, they have uh, they used tubes, you know, this um, uh, water hose tubes, and they they, they pierce uh, screws and nails in between, so it becomes like a spike. So they they just throw in a rope. So and uh, what they did as well, they uh, they lay, they pour uh, oil on the road. So, you know, so if you run, it's more likely you will fall because it's slippery. Yeah. And what they were doing, they were passing bricks. They're using a human chain to, to pass bricks. And these all students, um, they felt that um, they, they were fighting for, for independence. Okay. And next place. So this is what they did. So they were, you know, they put cement, they, they built bricks and to build a wall. So they worked really fast uh, to, build a, to build a wall. Within a couple of hours, there was a high wall. So once, once you are in the, um, in the university, uh, chances of you going in to come out can be quite difficult um, because the the entry and ex exit has become limited. And it came to a point as well. Uh, the students were were checking every on everyone coming in because they were afraid that people were they were spies. Yeah. So uh, so I had my press pass. So that that was uh, that was helpful. This was taken on top of the, uh, poly, in the uh, poly University. Uh, this was shot uh, 2 a.m. in the morning. And, uh, you know, every now and then you get a bit of commotion. You don't really know what's happening. Uh, so in, in crisis like that, uh, you you got to be on guard all the time because uh, things just happens within a split of a second. Uh, something happened and it could be it could be nothing actually, you know, and and then sudden and and out, out of nowhere the riot starts. Next please. Matthias, this all was shot with whatever light that was available, or you had extra uh, torch. <laughs> yes, this is all shot on available light. I don't use a flash. It's impossible to use a flash on such devices. Wow. And uh, shot on uh, of course I'm shot on on M system. On M camera, um, how I, I managed to get um, results like that? I use um, 
a fast lens. So I use a, a Sumilux, a Leica Sumilux 35 millimeter with one f 1.4. Mm. Uh, that allows me to shoot on low light condition. Uh, I'm just going to be a bit more technical now, you know, uh, just because sometimes people don't. People just look at the final end result and then and they say, "Oh, that's great," you know. But those who are really keen on photography, they wonder how do you get it. So, for instance, like this, because I read light, uh, this was sh shot at uh, uh, wide open, f1.4, my shutter speed, I try to, to because there's always movement going on, I try to stay on like 10125 or 1090, and uh, this was shot at ISO uh, 5000. So, um, whatever is in the night, is, it varies, it could be from... 3200 to 6400. So again, it's not your camera. If you're using the M10 and the M10, the good thing about it, the eye, so you can go to 50,000 and the noise level is much lower than what I'm using. I'm using the MP240. But however, if you're able to read light, you can control light, you are able to, to capture uh, photos on the different lighting condition. And you are doing all these zone focusing, pre focusing, or you are having no. some visual flex to help you with this? No, no visual flex is um, on this eyepiece. <laughs> you find it all the time. Yeah, manual. And I do on the spot focusing because I'm shooting at 1.4. F1.4, I cannot afford to be slightly out of focus because if that happens, then which means my image is going to be totally out. Because if you're shooting at 1.4, F1 uh, your depth of field is zero, zero tolerance. So which means if you shoot, you got to be spot on. So it's a matter of understanding. Just like this, this was really dark, you know. So this was taken at the ISO 5000. Uh, so again, it's how you read light. So if you're able to read light, uh, you can capture the fire as your light source. So like this photo, um, it was really dark and, and, and um, you know, they, they had a, a big riot on that night. So the police were about 300 meters away and the protesters, you know, they were throwing petrol bombs and the police were frying tear gas and uh, this is all coming to the uh, petrol bombs. So. And this guy was, uh, he was just trying to, to clear the fire. And there was a lot of running around like this, yeah. So, you know, when I took this photo, I think I was the only photographer who got this, this image because um, when the police were coming in, everybody just ran. So when, when, they, when they charge in, all the protesters will back off because, um, you know, they, no matter what, they cannot outbeat the police because the police they've got weapons. You know, they use uh, tear gas because when you're too close to tear gas, it, if it hits you, you know, you start tearing, you start coughing, you know, you get choked. Uh, it's, it's very uncomfortable. Um, so, so what I did, um, everybody ran away. I just stayed aside and. Uh, I took the race, you know, I just uh, told, I took the race and if I get caught, they, just, just, they would probably just tell me to, you know, go away. You know? So what I did, um, and good thing as well, because they were firing tear gas, where they were shooting, there was no tear gas. The tear gas shoots like 50 meters away. So I don't get the, 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 the tear gas. So, you know, and um, this scene also is like, to me, it was like a movie, you know, because uh, the building is all intact, everything's so nice, and then you see a lot of destruction going on. So, uh, so I try to shoot as well uh, the way it is, uh, as 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 raw as possible. Uh, this one, uh, as you can see, all the umbrellas on the uh, background. See, so all that, that's what they do in, in, in Hong Kong. Uh, they use umbrellas to protect them as well. So for instance, rubber bullets started firing 
and, and tear gas, you know, they will cover to protect themselves. And, um, and the guy on, on the foreground, he was uh, on guard, uh, was on duty, just uh, looking around, see whether there are any police coming in and they will radio uh, to the people up in the uni. So again, they put all these bricks just to slow you down because it's, it's to run is so difficult. Uh, you know, you most likely you will trip. So whenever you run, you got to look around and you have to you have to be careful of um, the uh, the spikes because they put the, the tube with a lot of uh, nails and screws. So when you run, if your shoe is is not um, is not uh, nail proof, you will you will pierce through. I've seen a few people who step on it, and it's not it's not a nice feeling. So, so that's obviously you spend quite a number of days or weeks there. So is that on a single trip you cover all these images, or you make multiple trips? I made multiple trips. I was there in June when the uh, the first protest started. Uh, it was a peaceful demonstration, but it was huge. You know, yeah. I think it was like almost like. To three thousand or even more. Uh, then I went in September in November. So November was really heating up. So uh, and uh, images so, we saw here are combinations from your two to three trips all together. Yes, it's a combination. Right. Same here, you know. Um, I use a, I like to work close in my subject. Um, so I wait for, again, I work through observation. I don't, you cannot plan your shots. You cannot conceptualize. There's no way when you're covering such things, what you need to do, you need to be sharp and observant. And of course, composition is so important. And of course the police are coming in, they were going after the protesters. And uh, that's when I took the photo. So um, again, shot on low light, and I had to be fast. I had to be do critical thinking of because uh, they're running so fast. What am I? What am I supposed to do? You know uh, what settings? So again, sometimes in order to avoid out of focus, I follow. I plan with them, which means I follow my subject. And this one, I was on the ground because they were really he, there was heavy firing going on. Um, and this, this was, you know, I was cornered in a such way that the police were really firing non-stop, you know, and I don't think they noticed I was there. So what I did, I went really low, you know, I went really low and I was actually right, down, right on the ground. And just as we were right on the ground, you know, taking cover, uh, police, you know, came and he had this uh, the rifle there, this is a tear gas rifle, and he was firing at a laneway because there were protesters out there as well. So just as I saw that, I was like, you know, this is a, this is a shot, you know? So I took uh, only about two frames and they move away. Move away. So, so you have to be careful. You got to blend in. This was in the uh, poly U in the canteen. So when I was there uh, in the uh, university, uh, what caught me by surprise in the canteen, everything was provided. That includes from food, clothes, uh, shampoo, soap, you know, everything, whatever you, you, you need is all there. Um, so they had a good supply of uh, of supplies of everything you know prepared for this so um these the students they were handing out uh things to uh, to fellow students and it came to a point they were quite sensitive of photographers taking photos of them uh, because um, nobody knew uh you know there was so uh, so much of supplies so um I, I I even don't know where he came from. So um, 
is unusual. And um, this one was in, taken in June, and I went on my on my first trip in June. So it was a uh, peaceful demonstration, and all the um, the stick on paper people were writing notes notes of uh, you know um, how they felt, and the way they were writing messages, and they were, it was everywhere on the street. Next, please. This was in a riot on, an, on an, another place. Um, this was in, again, in PolyU. Uh, that's when they had lots of fighting going on. And um, as you can see, the students are fully equipped. You know, they have gas masks. Uh, many of them do not want to be identified. They really have this shield of, um, Really fully covered, you can see the face. And just as this guy on my foreground is lighting up, as you can see, the lighter is lighting up, it's gonna light and start throwing up, throw to the, uh, throw the petrol bomb to the fire police. So, this is all in the spur of the moment. Uh, you just don't have time to think, it's gotta be quick when you take the photo. Matt, Matt. Yes. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I heard that that time, and I saw in the news also that uh, some journalist be, is uh, has has uh, has caught by the police and they got beaten by police. Actually, what happens there? Okay. Um, yes. I came to a point the police see the the Hong Kong protest is very very. Um, it's a mix, you know. Initially, they supposed to be a, a peaceful demonstration, and from my point of view, I'm the witness, so I'm not here to judge. But I saw both sides. So uh, when I was there in uh, June, September, the police didn't do, they didn't do much of going against. They didn't really retaliate. So what did the protesters did there? Uh, they went around destroying uh, like traffic lights, um, CCTV cameras, and things like that. Then, when, when it became really out of hand, uh, police were really brutal. You know, so so they they didn't care who you are, what you are. They even hit journalists. You're right. You know, so so, so you just got to be careful, and especially if you are. If you look local, uh, through my observation, they were targeting the local journalists, media, um, but foreign journalists, they wouldn't really dare to touch them that much because they know they're international media, but I've seen them firing at, at local media. So, uh, yes, in fact, uh, a Indonesian journalist, she was shot at close range. Uh, I think about 15 meters, you know, a rubber bullet went through her, her, her mask, a gas mask, and she had a, a proper gas mask with a, sh a glass on it. That she, it went through and she lost, she lost one eye. So, Matt, so, I, was, I was told you were also fired by a rubber bullet. Yes, uh, I was that shot was as well. In New York, right? I was shot by a rubber bullet, but uh, that was—I don't think that was intentional, because this was in the midst of um, uh, the protesters and the police. They were fighting, so I was in the way and I was um, dodging for. I see the um, the canister of the uh, tear gas flying and rubber bullets. I can't see rubber bullets. I see when it flies, when the cancer drops on the on the um, on the road, you know, you know, and you can see smoke traveling. And uh, that's when I I I watch where they're firing. But of course, no matter how careful you are, you know, you might get hit. So how I got hit because I was running and I saw a photo. A guy was um, lifting uh, a petrol bomb and, and he was about to throw it. Uh, I went for it. I took the picture and that's when I got shot. So. Um, 
but uh, I was lucky that it wasn't close range, uh, but it still hurts. Was that stop you for the day, or what kind of injury level it caused? Bleeding and uh, stuff? The injury level was, um, I had a bruise, you know, uh, felt pain, bruise, you know, but uh, it, didn't, it didn't pierce through my skin, but it's just a big bruise, you know, so, and uh, it's still on my leg, actually, I, you know, the bruise uh, uh, stayed there, didn't go away, so, yeah. Lucky so, you got thick skin, man. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> but although we were in pain at that time, at that point of time, um, because if you're in such uh, situation, you are in this journaling effect whereby you know sometimes even you're hurt, you don't feel the pain because it's your fear overcome your pain. You know, it's more you become like a surviving mode. You know, so usually after the whole ordeal, then then you then you feel it. So at that point in time, when I was hit, it's like I felt the pain, but I had to run. I had to, I had to sort of uh, uh, make sure that uh, I, I'm not being hit again. So is, is your, your surviving mode just takes place, and how do you work? This is um, um, in the university. So this is the archery, actually. You know, in the students, they got a lot of activities. And one of his archery, and what they did, they use this as part of the weapon as well. They use the, the, the arrow, they put fire, uh, they tie around, and they fire. They they shoot at the police. Uh, so when when I witnessed this, there was a bit of a, a disagreement with the protesters, you know, because they're saying that if they start doing this, and then the police got every right to use life rounds and shoot them. So there was a bit of a disagreement between within them at that time. So uh, because in moments like that, you know, you really uh, they they have to be very careful because the police is just all out. Uh, this one, yeah, this is a protest. That's why I got shot. You know, I was running around and trying to dodge and try to get a photo of it. So as you can see, all the smoke, they're all tear gas. Uh, so if you don't have a mask, uh, you'll be suffocating, you know, you, you start hearing, you start, it just gets to your throat and, and you know, it's you just find difficult to breathe, you know, you, you start coughing. So, so were you uh, wearing mask yourself as well? Sorry? Were you wearing this uh, mask yes, as well I, during the whole thing? Uh, but I wasn't wearing what that guy was wearing in the photo. Because uh, the, the 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 visor, it sort of comes out, so it's hard for me to, to look and focus. So what I did, I improvised. I had a, a mask just for my my nose, my mouth, and uh, I used uh, swimming goggles. So swimming goggles, I could see, I could go close. So that's what I did. So the the thing about um, tear gas. Is to protect your your eyes and of course your nose and your mouth. So if you have uh, the the tear gas mask uh, like this, then then you would not you will not get affected. So you can still take photos. You can still run around even the tear gas right in front of you. But however, being said that, um, the if you stay there for too long, you will get because the the filtration of the the, the gas mask. I don't think it's, you know, it only lasts for uh, X amount of time. So if you're there for too long, then it will get in. And then, you know, you, you, you start to suffocate, you know, you start to, start to, uh, start to cough and get choked. Any questions? Yep. This is our last pictures here. Uh-huh. Hi, Matt. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, as you must uh, move quickly in every shoot, and um, yeah, also most of your picture in the low light. Yeah. Uh, did you do focusing with uh, viewfinder, or you just do with hyperfocal or something? Sorry, say again, say again. Uh, how you do the focusing? Okay, uh, you said you 
you do with the 1.4 and in low light and you must move quickly uh yeah it's, it's not so easy to do focusing with uh, the viewfinder uh, do you do uh, hyper focus or something no i do on the spot focusing because uh, mm -hmm. because i'm shooting at 1.4 I cannot afford to get it out of focus because if I do get out of focus, then I won't get a sharp image. Uh, so what I tend to do here, I always keep my, uh, hang on, I just want to see, I always keep this here, my viewfinder, mm -hmm. my focusing, clean. Always keep it clean, this and this. And of course, oh, okay. so if you keep it clean, it's just like wearing your glass, your spectacles. So if there's a lot of fingerprints when you wear it, it's very muggy. Same principle. So I keep that clean. So when I keep it clean, so it's clear. So when it's clear, right, then of course I know my distance as well. So if I know my distance, then that helps a lot because uh, when I'm shooting, uh, if I'm focusing, it's a bit too dark. And sometimes I can estimate. So it's like, no, no, it cannot be one meter, it's about three meters. So it's understanding the distance and the judgment of your eye. So that's how I work on it. Okay, thank you. So Bernard, that was, the, uh, sorry, Matthias, that was the only camera you carry or you have a backup set of separate lenses yeah. to swap? When I went to Hong Kong, I decided to carry only one camera because I know it's going to be very difficult to, uh, to move around with two or three cameras because um, mm. the you're running around, it's just gonna slow you down if you're gonna carry so many cameras. So I brought one camera, I brought uh, two lenses. One is a 24 and one is a 50, it's my backup lens. So uh, 35 is my work lens. How many batteries do you, do you bring every day? Five? <laughs> uh, I carry about eight batteries. It's damn it. <laughs> yeah, as, as a backup, I don't even use uh, eight, eight batteries because the reason why I carry eight, so many batteries because uh, put it this way: if, you, if your camera battery is dead, you don't have a spare battery, it's pointless. So I rather carry more batteries. But you know, I, I hardly even use my backup batteries. Of course, if I go back to to my my hotel, I will charge my battery. Then I will load and, and the fresh battery. So what I do, I just recycle cycle my battery. I carry lots of memory cards. So I carry lots of memory. That mean, does that mean you 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 pre you pick your 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 moments and your images, or do you? Because I I assume these kind of situations is is hard to plan. You you won't know what's coming up, right? Yes, you will know. So, so I don't plan uh, 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 what, what to do in terms of my, you know, I will just be prepared, especially on my equipment. And uh, I don't carry a bag, I have a pouch. I think a lot of people see me, I always, carry, I always have a pouch with me. Mm. The pouch is where I put my batteries, my memory card, my press graduation, um, all my, my documents inside. Yeah. So with that, I, I can move around, I can run around quite easily. A bag is good, but sometimes a bag slows you down in terms of uh, moments like that. Matthias, Thank you. Uh, can I ask you a question, Sis T. Kerry Warsaw? Yes. Okay. You were, you were using a F1.4 and always you use a speed of one over 125. What is the safe... Uh, what's the highest ISO you ever used on those at that time uh, at night that's safe for M10? For M10, okay, for M10, um, you can use even like, okay, for instance, if, you, if, if I was using M10 at that moment of the low light whereby they were fighting in the night, um, I would use, if I want to have to, if I really want to play a safe in a sense that fast shuttle speed at say, for instance, one over 250 and put my shuttle speed, I want to leave it as, uh, uh, sorry, my f-stop, I want to leave it as say f4, 5.6. Easily I can use ISO uh, 8000, 10,000, I can get away. 
Okay. Okay. I can watch for your pouch, uh, Matthias. I'm using those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so that comes in very handy. Yes. So, Matthias, one more question. What, what kind of uh, projects or, or work that you are currently doing in Singapore since you are grounded, you are not traveling anywhere? Uh, at the moment now, I, um, I stay at home. I, I, I do a lot of uh, research. I run through my photos. And I, when I'm out, I do my essentials. I have my camera with me always. And uh, that also means that you cannot take photos. So when I do my essentials, whatever catch my eyes, I'll take a photo of it. I'll take pictures on the current situation. So that's what I've, I've been doing. Uh, and of course, I prepare for my future. And, you know, let's hope, you know, this gets over and done. You know, I don't, I don't see mm -hmm. that, you know, it's going to get over so soon. But if once this is over, the crisis is over, COVID-19 is over, at least we can move on back to our normal life. Anybody Any questions? Any more? Otherwise, we are doing pretty good in time, an hour. All right. Any other do, questions? Do you have a plan to make your hair blonde? Oh, okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> silver, silver, or green. I think my hair is normal. Uh, Matthias. Yeah. Hi, Matt. Hello, Matthias. Yes. Yes, Matthias, it looks that uh, most of your picture, uh, you took the picture quite close to, uh, to the object. Am I right? Yes, I'm very close to my subject. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so brave. Yeah, uh, because um, I'm used to working with close range. So again, it's, it's getting to be used to it. Um, it's how you approach. So if, if your approach is, is very important, because if you go in like, if you go in like a bull, you know, then yeah. of course you, you be known for it. So you have to go in very subtle, yeah. yeah. And yeah. because uh, I like using a thirty-five or fifty, because thirty-five and fifty is good to your eye. There's no yeah. distinction. Your eyes is what you see from this lens. And to me, uh, that's humanity. So, so if I want to do true reporting, I have to. Do humanity? How it happened? Uh, I know I am not picking on other photographers. There's no right or wrong, uh, but I've known photographers that use really wide angle lens, and like I've known a few photographers, of, you know, a few of my 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 mates. You know, they like using pretty wide. Uh, I mean, they have their own opinion, which I respect that. But uh, imagine if you're taking someone in the famine, somebody so skinny and hungry. And then you use, uh, uh, say, a uh, uh, 15 millimeter or 16 millimeter wide angle lens, the man stretching out his hand or a hand, everything will be distorted. So you even look even wider. So when you look at it, wow, it looks so dramatic. So this is what we see as our eyes. So, you know, I have to, to respect my subject in order to, to do what I want to do to show what's happening. Yeah. You still leave your images as it is. You don't. You don't crop. You don't adjust. No, I don't crop. Um, <laughs> I don't do manipulation. I don't take. I don't do alteration. And, you know, I don't take things out. I don't put things in. My only thing that I do editing is I do on my uh, my shadows and my highlights. I think I've said this before. It's like printing. When I was in a dark room, when I was in my film days, when you get your correct exposure on your negative. Yeah. When you put it in a enlarger, you still have to get a exposure to, to print. And then you've got to do a bit of burning and dodging because your enlarger is only a general light source. So you need to burn and dodge. So uh, Photoshop has applied to the dark room technique. So that's what I do. I just do a bit of fine tuning because no matter what you, you take, yeah, you get it right, but you still have to do a bit of fine tuning. Uh, it's just like cooking, you know. So you're a chef, you know, you bring a fish. You know, they still have to do fine tuning of how to cook, you know, in their own style. Thank you. Also, Matt, um, 
entering the riot uh, circumstances like that, do you uh, have to have special permits or just you come to Hong Kong and try to find uh, uh, the good place for photo or? The, okay, um, you don't need permit in Hong Kong, it all depends which country. So you need to know which country. A few countries, they want, they want the uh, journalist visa. But most countries, you know, you just go in as it is. So it's better to go in as, as just a normal visa because you go in as a journalist visa, you have to submit a lot of paperwork. Mm -hmm. and, you have no, and you have no problem with the poly something because you walking around the camera and taking photos. Well, because I have a, a, a press uh, accreditation, mm -hmm. I have press ah. pass. So okay. a press pass helps a lot, yeah. But even then, sometimes you have a press pass, press pass might not help you 100%. So sometimes mm -hmm. they might just have to go away, you're not allowed to take, because they find that uh, journalists are trying to show the honest truth of what they did and they don't want to be seen. Mm -hmm. You know, So I've been um, asked to leave many times, you know. So even like, uh, you know, they end up in uh, a place whereby there yeah, are a lot of roadblocks or rather they barricade the whole place mm -hmm. so when i get to my destination uh this i could not go any closer so i have to alight and walk just by walking they have this strong torch and they start touching they start to light point at you you just want to blind your eye in a sense they'll see what you're doing so again uh to me it's also it's like intimidation game you know and sometimes what they did um because they could not, there were so many press people out there, they could not stop us from uh, uh, photographing. So what they did, whenever you lift up a camera, they use a torch and blind your camera. Oh, wow. So that's what they did. But sometimes when they did that, I said, thank you very much. You make the photo for me. Because when they point certain things, I just move to certain angle, I get a light beam. You see? So again, that's how you take advantage uh, on your lighting. So then, so I look at it is is doesn't matter if you want to stop us from from not being uh, taking the photo. So they point they point the torch really bright, you know, beam lights, and, and they just right in front of your lens. So you get nothing practically. But again, it's how you move. So for instance, the lights coming here, I just have to move this way. You know, I just have to tilt it a bit. That's it. I'm off off angle for the light, and then I get really nice light rays coming in. So again, uh, uh, is how we understand light. Matthias. Thank you. So you, you are shooting on your own most of the time or you are moving together with other reporters, journalists uh, in a group? I shoot on my own. And um, uh, on June, September, I was on my own. Um, November, I was with a colleague. Uh, with another photographer. So uh, we, we move around together, but we, we spend separate ways. Yeah, so it depends. So sometimes it's good to work with, with, uh, with people, the uh, people working together. Uh, at times, it's better to work on your own. So again, pluses and minuses. Uh, if you work together, then of course, you, have, you must have a mutual understanding that, okay, you, we take photos on different scenes, so that we will not uh, um, take the same picture. See what I'm saying? But if you, are, if you are on your own, then of course you whatever you you get, there's no one there, and nobody's got the picture. But in Hong Kong, it's quite impossible uh, when I was there because there's so many uh, media uh, photographers and, and film uh, cameramen. So it was quite difficult to get a photo without a media. When I say without media, you cannot sort of put that out because they're always in the photo. So if you can see a lot of my photos here, I, 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 would, I would avoid press guys taking pictures, uh, not to put in my picture because it doesn't look, um, to me, doesn't look authentic because what I want to capture, I want to capture the scene of the riot. So the good thing is, um, because I was, 
I could go close. I was uh, daring enough to go close enough. A lot of photographers use long lenses. So again, using a long lenses and a short lens, it gives you a different perspective, totally different perspective. So you use a long lens, you get very compressed image. So, you, you know, I want to show the whole scene as the way I saw what my eyes saw, so that my audience will see exactly, it's like, wow, this is how it looked like. But use a short, if you use a long lens, everything will be uh, compressed, and then you, your image is sharp, and most likely you get a bouquet, because the longer your lens, the shorter your depth of field, and then your angle is tighter. Okay, do we have any more okay. questions from the floor? Mm. Ah, yeah, I think, uh, how about the planning? I mean, you make uh, this photo series and you plan going to Hong Kong to take a picture. Do you uh, set up your uh, photo planning first or you just going and see what happened and then shoot? My, in terms of photo planning, I do my research. So, but for Hong Kong, it was very, very complicating. Uh, initially when it happened, you know, um, a lot of people sort of, oh, this is a big, big demonstration. But what was the reason behind it, you know? And, and uh, what was the cause of the, the demonstration? So it was very, you know, touch and go. So I, I did my research on that and wanted to know more about it. And uh, that was what I did. But in terms of places where to go, I have to be there. Of course, before even I, before I leave, I'll find out where to go. But every time when you end up in that place, you see a different, different scenario, different scene. Because sometimes uh, people can exaggerate. They say, wow, well, you know, this place is da da da, and go on, you know, it's a lot happening. But when you're there, it's like, it's okay. You know, when certain places are not reported, then you look at it, it's like, oh my goodness. So again, uh, uh, I go on the, on the case by case, and, and that's how I look at it. So I don't plan where I want to go, only when I'm, when I'm there in my destination and I find out where to go. And of course, it's also, it's, it's not cheap traveling around, um, especially when you go to such places. A lot of, uh, I guess I, I traveled by taxi. I didn't even bother hiring a vehicle because it was, it's impossible to park your vehicle. So the best option is go by taxi. And a lot of taxi drivers will not even take this to where we want to go. Many of them will just refuse. They say, oh, no, 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 trouble area, no, they won't take this. Some, a few of them will take us, happily will take us, and encourage us to take more photos because they, they, they want uh, the world to see what's happening in Hong Kong. So again, it's a very, very mixed feelings when I was there. Okay. Any more questions? Uh, Matt. Yes. Uh, Ruben. Ruben, yes. Um, you said just now that you get the information from the group, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm very curious. Where, how, how can you join to that group? It's a very close group, right? Even a police, even a police, cannot 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 join the group. And yeah, so can join what, the... They do, what they do, they will vet you. They will they will, they will try to see your background, what you do, before they before they accept you. See, so sometimes you're lucky, you've been accepted. Sometimes they think, oh no, I don't feel comfortable with this person, then they will not accept you. See, okay. So, Again, and then also, once you're there, you start talking to people and one thing leads to another. So once the, the people, they know you, oh yes, okay, you can join. And then if you're lucky, you say, oh yeah, I know the administrator. So again, it's, it's, it's gaining access and trust. That's why I always believe whenever you are doing reporting, be honest because there are many people who are not honest and when the subject or the person that you, you know, they trust you and they find out you're not honest and you, you, they, you never gain trust again. 
So for me, it's very important. So the, that's why when I'm into this line in documentary and reportage, I always believe, you know, um, in respect and dignity of my subject. Even so you got it. So you got it by approaching one by one to the people you met at that time, right? No, I was I was I was lucky. I just uh, uh, apply. I just put in as join, and it just accepted me. Okay. Then I get all the listings, and also, uh, but let me tell you, if, if you if you don't want to get lots of messages 24 seven, then don't do it because you know sometimes you get just really tired. It's like in the middle of the night, you still get messages. People sending messages and telling what's happening. Yeah, of course you can mute it, you know, but uh, but it's it's good information. And, and it's very it's fairly precious, right? Joining in the group is very precious. It's is very precious for for the first first step for the first step for, uh, for this project. Yeah. So at least you know where you're going, and then you and you meet new people, and then you you get different different views from different people. Mm. You know, you like like this Hong Kong demonstration. Uh, Almost the whole of, I would say, 70% of the Hong Kong people are against it. Um, but majority are students and they're young. So when, when Hong Kong and, and the British hand over Hong Kong to China in 1997, these kids, these students, they were not, they were just born at the time, they were young. So now they come to this age, it's like, no, nah, we want Hong Kong to be Hong Kong. Hong Kong is Hong Kong. But at that time, they were too young to even voice out. See? So, so these are the people now, uh, they are fighting for, for, for the future. So that's what I get the feedback from, from the people. Whereas the older folks, there's like, you know, they get angry with the youngsters. I met an, 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 a lady in her 50s. She was actually clearing the road. They were, you know, they were throwing bricks, they were, they were barricading the road. She literally moved everything and she and she got she went against the youngsters and said, look, go get a job, you know. Why are you causing so much problems, distraction, you know? Here I am, I'm trying to make a living, you 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 are destroying my livelihood. So again, is 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 it became a bit out of hand. Let's say. So so you know, covering such issues, you get different stories from different people. So I'm here. I'm not here to judge. I'm there to. I'm there as a witness. So my job is is to photograph as the way it was. And hopefully, uh, the next generation. You know, they can learn something out of it. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, got it. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, thank you all. Thank you, Matthias, for your time and for your for your sharing session. Uh, Good I job, Matthias. Yeah, Great one. Almost. Thank you very much, Matthias. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Matthias. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stay healthy. Stay awesome. Healthy. Thank you. Yes. Very Thank awesome. you, Matthias. Thank you. Oh, one, one Thank question, Matthias. Thank you, Matthias. Oh. <laughs> Hello, one question, Matthias. Yes, yes, silakan, Bu. Are you going to make a book like uh, you made uh, for <laughs> Japan? Uh, I, would like to, I would like to. Honestly, yes, I'll be honest. For me, uh, my main one of the main projects is doing books. Oh, and book, yeah. One that I I I um, uh, I like doing is not because I would like doing books because I want to be famous, or whatever. It's not that. To <laughs> me, it's not about me. I've said it before. My photos is about them. Share sharing. Yes, sharing so that the next generation. Yeah. Uh, but books are not cheap. They are expensive to produce, and it takes a lot of time to produce. When I say a lot of time. 
just not um, booking like you know six months or you know or nine months it could be years if you want to do a compilation of uh, a substance of strong work so yes a lot of you need a lot of perseverance you need a lot of patience uh, to get this going yes books fantastic because um, you know the next generation will, will be able to see it yes definitely so books is one of my agenda Thank you, Matthias. Good luck always. Thank you very much. Terima kasih. Thank you, yeah. Thank you, Matthias. Hope to see you soon here. Yep, I miss Indonesia. <laughs> yeah, we miss you too. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Terima kasih semuanya waktunya. Terima kasih. Bye, Thank Matthias. You. Thank Bye. you. Bye.